Thank you, that was great. I, I can echo on, I took an ex, uh, exchange, like I said before, and really, if you're thinking about doing it, 100% do it. If you're not thinking about doing it, 100% still do it. It will be one of the best experiences of your life. The reason that I'm even in Taiwan is because, you know, the 20-year-old me who was terrified to go on an airplane went on an exchange, and, you know, I still talk to these people, and still, you know, communicate with them all the time. Really, it's, it's, it's amazing. So now that you've heard from all of our speakers, we are done with the presentations. But now, probably some of you have some questions uh, about either student life or you know, work-life balance or maybe you know, tuition costs or whatever. So we are going to invite our speakers to answer any questions. I'd also like to invite um, Selena Shen. She is the president of the IAMBA Alumni Association. She has over 15 years experience in HR, so if you have questions about jobs, this might be a good time to ask them. I might actually bend her a little bit after that and talk to her about some of that. Also we have Li Chi, she is the super for all of the IMBA. Thank you Li Chi. Part time, answer most of my questions. <laughs> I have a path worn out to her office I think at this point. We have Jasmine, she's the Alumni Association and Career um, Advice. We have Emily for dual degree program, ICDF scholarship, and we have Jean for PR. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure where all of you guys are, but I'm around here somewhere. So if you do have any questions, feel free to ask. Like I said before, we will have tea and refreshments afterwards where we'll all be available. We also have some students here. Um, I see some first year and second year students who will probably be attending for the free food, and then they'll be answering any questions. Actually, these guys are quite quite intelligent and they're really hard workers, so they're really good people to ask about any questions. So if there's any questions, just feel free to raise your hand and I can come and ask you. This is the awkward part, I think, where... <laughs> okay, yeah, sir, so, Selena just wants to say a few words, so um, please welcome Selena. Um, good morning, and I am Selena, and from year 2005. I know it's an awkward moment for question. And I was told that many of you ask about career. So I thought that I'd spend some time and give you some general uh, comment on the career side. For most of you, if you're considering MBA program, it must have, you must want something from the MBA. For all of you, it may, the answer may be different. Um, if you want for your competency or your ability, then there are different courses that you should look into. See which courses that will go, is going to help you to improve your competence or your capability. And the other one is for exposure. If you're looking for exposure, you're right now in your career bottleneck. That means you're not moving up or uh, horizontal anyway, you need something to break through. And exposure is one thing that may help you. And the other ones, like I say, is opportunity. For IMBA, you've heard a lot of diversity. So for as an alumni president, that this year I took my parents to Germany, to Berlin for a trip. Then I met alumni there because there are um, exhibition there. And we have uh, US. So it's like you travel or you're on business anywhere in the world, you leverage your resource. That's the IMBA's most important asset. So if you are join us for the later refreshment, use your, uh, take this opportunity to talk to all the people or staff or professors there. Then ask them and uh, let them know your specific case. They, they will give you very good advice. So that's the opportunity, either in school, when you're study, or after school, when you will be part of the alumni uh, member. Uh, alumni also help a lot of IMBA program career plan, that we have hunters in place, we have uh, industry leaders to give some insights. So those are opportunities. And now it depends on you. What do you want from this IMBA? IMBA has a lot of assets and opportunities. And what is uh, going to good for your career, then you decide. Because everyone wants different things. So that's a general feedback for if you have any 
career um, questions. Otherwise, we can talk always later. Thank you. Thank you so much. Selena's right. Now, now is your time. You have you know a bounty of information here, and it's a great time to answer answer any questions. One thing that I didn't do in my undergrad was ask enough questions, and then I always found myself going to the professor's office afterwards and trying to find their information and spend a lot of time. So is there any questions for any of our presenters? Uh, yes. I want yes. Ask one question. Because like uh, most of us are working currently, uh, I want to ask how about how percentage of current students in IMBA are also working and learning to get that at the same time? How many? Yeah, yeah. Like oh, actually, uh, for our local students, most of them they are working and study at the same time. But some students at their first year they quit their job because they have plan to do do a degree or do a change. We do have some students they have they are doing that, so they become like a full time student. But most of the time when they enter, they are full, uh, they are full time worker. They are part time students. Thank you for your question. Any other questions? Yes. Thank you. Um, I, I, I was really interested in uh, learning German language, especially. And uh, I was looking forward to exchange to um, Viet, uh, Austria or Germany in the future. Um, I, I, I want to ask, um, like, how long of a duration uh, will you stay abroad? Like, <clears throat> Six months. Six months. Yeah. And. Um, also, how like like is it difficult to like communicate there? Because you said most people speak English, but not everyone speaks English there. So, are you able to learn like actual actually learn German language like while you're staying there? Wait, uh, before I went there, I know no German like zero. So I think in my case, uh, in my case, I think is 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 a bit uh, how to say my improvement might might be slower than the person who already has some background in German. Yes, that, that would be better if you study German before you go. For example, one of the, my Taiwanese uh, double degree students, he been, uh, he been, a, he, been he, he went to France, but he so before he goes, so he take the uh, French class in Taiwan before he go before he goes abroad. So I think that that's that is. But but the thing is. Uh, because I, I look I looked on the website because uh, mo uh -huh. most of the language uh, classes are during Monday to Friday, that that's why I know and because um, I'm I'm having jobs right now so. Oh. I, I I don't know yeah. Oh I in that case I would say I can give the contract of my friends to you because I I think he he do that he study some uh, language of the country he would like to go first before he go there. And he also like part-time student and part-time working at the same workers at the same time. So okay, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll ask you more questions later. Okay, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I looked at you when I went to France. Actually, I didn't speak any French. Um, a lot of these universities are also they know that people are coming without language skills, so they help you with cultural and language things. And also, I believe probably they're in English. Yeah, all the courses. So, um, also Professor Sherry, she just wanted to share some of her comments on the exchange. Okay, thank you, Byron, because I just came uh, early this morning from Thailand, and that was from the PING, which is the Partnership in International Management. So I came from uh, Thammasat University, but I just sit next to the dean of WU from Austria, and, and also the dean from uh, Mahan and the Lipsy. And I just want to, to add to our today's session, to emphasize that one of the benefits of our program is we have the dual degree program, which is one plus one, in addition to the uh, six month exchange. And this one plus one dual degree program arrangement is um, some of our efforts to make you benefit from this global exposure. And that is one plus one, which means a one year in domestic school and one year in the other dual degree school. And then you pay the domestic fee. And then for this dual degree program, uh, this year we have up to nine partner schools uh, join this program. So including uh, Mahan and Lipsy in Germany, 
and then WU is the new news one on the list in Austria. Of course, we have five more schools in France, and also we have uh, Purdue in the United States. And uh, most of the program, I should say, 100% that uh, the courses given in the partner schools are the English taught program. So mainly it's in English. So if you want to learn Germany, that, um, that may not be the main purpose for us to send students to exchange or to join the dual degree program. But of course, you'll be exposed to, to the environment. And then that will be the chance for you to learn the culture and the language and even the business ethics in those countries. Thank you. There's another question, I think, over here. Uh, hello. I'm curious about how you like differentiate IMBA from EMBA. Because, like, uh, from Vincent's uh, introduction, I saw your average age is around 30 and working experience is around six years. What if so I'm curious about your current student. Are they like, I don't know, more than 35 or they they have worked for like more than six years? Do you recommend them, do you recommend them to join your program? And I think, I wanna know what's your like stronger points you know, to compare with the MBA. Thank you. Okay, uh, so thanks for your question. So actually for uh, business education, uh, in Taiwan, we have market segmentation. So for EMBA, actually they are looking for somebody who has very long work experience. So normally, you know, they are you know, like the middle or even, you know, the, the senior management team in the company. Yeah, and normally they will select uh, their candidate from prestigious uh, institutions. Yeah, so actually their bar is much higher. And actually, uh, I cannot, I can, I don't know whether it's good for me to put it this way. Uh, many of them, they come to school, not for study, not to learn. They come for networking. Yeah, so I think it's very different. So if you have accumulated like more than 20 years work experience, your company, I think the sales, sales is more than like a, one, I would say one billion new power dollars, then I may, I think you may stand a good chance. But you also need to show, you know, the organizational chart. You know, where where are you, you know, in the pyramid structure. Yeah. So and how much you pay? No. How much is your salary, your income? And yeah, this is what they are looking at. Yeah. But our program is very different, yeah, because uh, we want to uh, groom our student to become a future business leader. They may not be current business leader, but they will be in future, in five or 10 years of time. Yeah. So that's why the average is five years, and we require at least two, week, two years work experience. Yeah. So this is because we, we, we want every student you know, has the ability to share you know, their experience and what they learn from the industry. So that's why EMBA and IMBA are very different. We are also very different from the MBA program. Because most of the MBA program in Taiwan, they don't require work experience. So most of your colleagues, they are just graduate you know, from the university. Yeah. But our students are very different. Yeah. And also, uh, we allow part-time part -time students to join us. Yeah. So that's why I think that's the best composition for students. Yeah, because we can learn from each other. It's not just we learn from professor, we learn from the textbook. We also get to you know, uh, learn uh, our colleagues from other countries. So we can you know, try, uh, try to you know, learn different cultures and how to work with uh, people with different cultural backgrounds. So this is what this program is for. Just like us if you were to study overseas. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'd just like to add that even in my courses, there's a, not only diversity in, in terms of countries, but also in age. There's people with families, people who are vice presidents, people who are you know, junior associates. 
there's a huge range of different people and different experiences in the program. So if you feel like you have too much experience, I think there's always a learning opportunity. If you feel like you don't have enough experience, again, there's a learning opportunity. I think Professor Vitsa put it in a great way. We welcome everyone. And if, if this is something that you're interested in, then I, think, I really think you should go for it. Yeah. Is there any other questions? I'm Dandy and also being a salesman, uh, I have a question for Alex. Uh, first, of, first of all, um, thank you for your uh, attractive and inspiring speech I learned from your talks. And uh, you just mentioned that uh, you, have, uh, you have a problem uh, in your job and which become a motivation for your uh, uh, inner driving force for you to join this program. And uh, the, the question is, what kind of major do you take? during this program and does your problem solve uh, after you taking the course and how this course help to to solve your problem you are faced and how this course change your career career path and your life thank you oh, sorry what's your name Andy. 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 hi thank you thank you for asking um i think that's a really good question uh, be honest, I'm just been like almost graduate, so I've been studying for two years. So if you ask me, does it really help me to go a really good salary change or position change? So far, it's not. But I do have a, a good package and good uh, my career new plan right now because I guess I'd be also helping. So one of the example is I was just handling the uh, Middle East local sales. So at the beginning, I just frequent travel. So when we go there, visit my, I was thinking, I was always like Zhangjiang. I just go there and say hello and come back. So now I really go deeper with all the distributions, the resellers. And after a uh, few years, I've been learning from, for example, marketing plan or maybe business strategies, and you have to organize your own companies. I started thinking that, okay, maybe it's time to propose my boss. I can have an office, a branch there. So we do have already have overseas branches in Europe, the US, and even Asia, but in Dubai, no. So once I actually start to proposing all of my idea at, at the second year in IMBA, so I tell them that I am thinking as a business gonna grow more than 20, 30% year by year. So this is a good way we can actually start with uh, offices and then all the expenses and what is the marketing plan. Also how's the reseller plan for all our product and our products. So if you ask me, actually not only one course, it's actually strategy business, business plan, or maybe even a leadership classes that are telling, that are leading me how to become a follower and become a leader, to communicate with my team, also my partners. So there are different courses to help me with that. And so actually a uh, few, few weeks ago, my boss just asked me to go to his office and I said that, hey Alex, uh, how's your, your IMBA program? Is that finished? And then, uh, you know, we now we have a plan. Are you are you willing to move to Dubai and then work there? No, no. He just told me that like a few, few weeks ago, and then he start to say that, okay, we, we should start reviewing your your all the proposal again. And then once you all sit down with me, like get ready, we should propose to a CEO. So I cannot tell you. Oh, I'm bit just help me all that. But this is also from the, at, at the beginning. I show you the attitude. I I'm, I'm ready to get changed and I did change, and then something just come to me. So, I mean, because it's all the classmates, the culture is different, that help me to adapt the situation and can transfer to another one. Also, yeah, I think, I also, um, I guess, also, I, I also did a lot of effort on, on this business too. Yeah, so, I'm not sure, does it answer your question or? Yeah, so, so you mean uh, this course maybe change your style of both in life and work? Yeah, I think it definitely changed. It definitely changed. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I don't know, Selena, if you wanted to add anything to the, Selena, if you want to add anything about the alumni? No? Um, no okay. All right, next question. Thank you, my name is Harvest. And I have a question. One question is, how many students will NCCU pick? Because I took upon the history records, uh, maybe last year, that 
for local students, it's about 27, and for international students, it's about 27, and it will be a 54 of a big class. But if my information is correct, people for local students apply, it's about 50 more, so nearly half will be cut off. So I'm asking, is it also the same, 27 students for the next year? Now, uh, uh, it's just a question. So I'll ask, I'll ask other worries and troubles after I get in here. Okay. Yes, we will admit 27 local students in 2020. Yeah, next year we will admit 27 local students. But for international students, actually, we have more than 27. Yeah, actually, every year we will have around 60 students in one batch. So 27 local, that is because of the Ministry of Education. We cannot change the, the number. But for international, we do have more. So in each batch, we, we have around 60 students. Uh, actually, not including exchange students. So in some courses, you will find we have more international students than local. Because the exchange students, they will come to IMBA, join IMBA courses for the elective course. We're having it. just two quick questions. One is, uh, if we really want to get in, uh, what is the evaluation process? Is it like a, like a job interview? I, I know there's an interview process, and do we, should we take test or give a presentation to professors? And the second one is, we have courses uh, during weekdays. And if I, I have to uh, miss out classes or being late, so how many times? How many chances do I get? Uh, if I miss like four times, do I get a uh, yeah, failed class or something like that? Uh, thank you. Okay, so this is very uh, administrative part, so allow me to answer. For the uh, admission procedure, uh, we have uh, already, uh, the schedule has already been announced. The application period is from December 4th to December 17, 5 p.m. You have to get uh, like a count number. So that is December 4th to December 17. And then we don't have a written test. Uh, we will have an interview on uh, March 7th. Okay, so the date, please uh, mark on your notebook. March 7th. Yes. Uh, but it says there's a written test. Oh. No, 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 that is, if, if that is for, so some that is for other programs, but not for IMA oh, programs. Okay. So not for everyone. Yeah. So uh, that is the first question. Right? For the second question, we have a press uh, policy. Uh, the press policy is, uh, uh, I think for our current students, they all know that. Actually, uh, press policy is uh, because we, we do believe the learning. The learning is very important. The class uh, participation is very important. So for each uh, one credit course, the student will be allowed to like uh, miss one class meeting. For two credit course, is uh, two class meetings. For three credit course, uh, students can use three class meetings. And the first class meeting, because that's the first uh, first class for a student to still shop around, so we will not count it. So, but don't, don't worry about the class policy. Every time I need to like reinforce and to assure our uh, potential IMP student, no worry, worry about that because. Uh, starting from this policy uh, be applied to our program. Uh, I, in my memory, actually none of them really fail a course because of the policy. You can make it, okay, no worry. <laughs> Most of the courses on weekdays, they 
might difficult it might be difficult for some the applicants. So Okay, as uh, like uh, our director and many of our like uh, an online intern student, they share that actually we do have provide very big uh, flexibility. So not to worry about that. Like, uh, maybe you are not able to come to the school during weekday. Actually, for the courses, actually we have about like 50, 50, 50 uh, during weekday and 50 at weekend. And uh, most of weekend courses are like a professor they from abroad, or some courses the professor that they do think. They do have very like spe uh, special class uh, schedule, and they do believe the weekend course and very intensive whole day course student can benefit more. So it's about 50-50. And uh, also for the flexibility is uh, for student. Though we do encourage our uh, local student and international student also to finish as uh, as fast as possible two to three years, but actually for our program, student can study at the most four years. So if you cannot like, take many courses in one semester, no worry, you have enough time. Four years is the most. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. 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 Uh, just uh, something else that is worth noting. Even though the schedule of the classes is from Monday to Friday, from 7 to 10, it does not mean that you have to take all the five days. It depends on the credits you take. So usually you will end up maybe twice a week, two days a week, having classes. It's not like you have to be here every day, right? It depends on the courses and the credits you take. So maybe you can work around um, your work schedule to be here, let's say, Wednesdays and Thursdays and the weekends. So, and again, the office, it's very, they help you a lot in, in terms of flexibility. They work with you. The purpose of IMBA is not to fail you. The purpose of IMBA is to make you be successful. So they will work with you in any situation you will have. Uh, I, I'm very interested in your uh, bio degree program. And uh, I'm, uh, I have a quick question to Professor, uh, Professor Shelley. Uh, like you mentioned before, we don't have the, the one, uh, the two years, uh, one would be the a domestic program and the, the other is to be overseas. I'm wondering the what's the order in the with the these two uh, for two years. The first one we can choose the 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 uh, each year to be the domestic or overly uh, freely. Or first year for sure domestic yeah. first. You need to study in the IMBA program locally for one year. Okay, okay? and then you get to you know, make yourself qualify for the next year in the foreign country. Thanks. Hi. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, I want to know more about the elective course and also the ETP program. Uh, because the uh, the total credit we need to pass is 42, and for the required uh, credit is around 25. So, uh, do you have any, and also the electric course have full concentration for, for, for different kinds of domain. Do you have any suggestion that the, uh, how do we arrange our plan uh, over to the electric course and also the ETP? Uh, all the required courses are actually students are, uh, need to take the IMBA required courses. But as I uh, uh, mentioned, actually students, you can choose to waive some. We have five required courses. You, if your educational background is uh, business, you can uh, either provide the evidence or to pa pass the test, pass the test to waive those uh, required courses. And the details actually we will provide to our students later. Okay. And for the okay required courses, and you talk about the ETP, right? ETP and the elective course. Actually, all ETP courses are provided by different department at the College of Commerce. We also admit them as elective courses can be counted to our graduation credits. And for the uh, 
ETB courses are uh, are all uh, we uh, need ETB courses as selected. So actually, I didn't get you very well for the ETP courses and the elective. Because, because you can choose the elective course, and also you can choose the uh, ETP course. Yeah. So I, uh, first, uh, I want to know more about, do you have any suggestion for, to arrange the, your plan? For example, uh, I, uh, I can, uh, you can suggest me, I, I can fo only focus on one domain of the elective course concentration. Actually, for we have... I can choose whoever I want. Yeah, she just choose one course you think can help you. Actually, we have four concentration, but it is optional. It's not a must. Actually, students, they, if you want, really want to focus on one concentration, you can choose the course from the under that concentration. And at the end, when you graduate, if you uh, get nine credits from that concentration, in addition to your diploma, you will receive a, a certificate. But that is optional, and you don't need to apply for that beforehand. Only when you graduate, the office will count your course taking. If you uh, fulfill your hour requirement uh, for nine credits under one concentration, you will receive a certificate. But that is optional. So actually, many of our students, they choose the course, what they think they can help them the most, right? Maybe I will give the microphone to someone. Um, yes, as a personal advice when it comes to electives, um, they are what they, the word says, they are elective. It's your choice. You can choose them whether it's a class that you think you're going to learn from or if you have, like in my strategy for example, I wanted to get a concentration. So I based my electives on the concentrations I wanted to achieve. I, I, my concentrations were management in Asia because since I'm not from here, I really wanted to grasp what the Asia business was all about, and also marketing because it was the career path I wanted to go. So I based my electives on that decision. But for many of you that are working, for example, you can base your electives on your schedule. Uh, you can base your electives on maybe some, you wanna learn a skill for your own job. And when it comes to ETP, um, this is, it's an option that IABA gives you, but I have to say it's a very rare option. I don't think a lot of people actually go through that route. I haven't actually met anyone taking ETP. Uh, and the thing is because ETP are courses taught in English that are outside the IMBA. So the IMBA will not give you full support on those classes. They will count the credits for you, but um, all the logistics of those courses will be with the other departments. So to save yourselves um, some trouble and just to be convenient, uh, most people opt to take the classes in IMBA, the electives offered by IMBA. But that's general, like what the students here would do, based on that. Um, I, I'll give you my example. Uh, um, again, it's your purpose of MBA program. If you're looking for a degree, the, my class batch that is marketing domain. Most of the courses that she took is marketing. So I asked her, why do you take the same courses that you already majored when you were under, undergraduate? She said, I just want to graduate. <laughs> right, that, that's her purpose, that's obvious. So she, her degree and her program, her concentrations all around marketing, sort of. Right, but the other person I met is engineer background. So he took a lot of management, finance, and I asked him why. He said, I don't want to be seen as an engineer that much. I, this concentration will help people to focus on my other ability. So uh, concentration is a way to help people notice what you want them to see not the classes that you have to choose. So we didn't really care about the concentration unless you have specific purpose. But most of classes that we choose is something we think is going to help us now or future. So the classes, ETB is less business focused for me. So if you are interested in law or um, IT or then you can choose other focus that's additional, depends on your learning. But it's, if you want this degree, the focus to be your career plus, 
then when you take your classes, other than schedule, you could consider that. I think you can ask each more detail of my our current classes, uh, what our current classes are, and you can make some decision earlier. Uh, since it's much clear, so as a result, uh, if we got more than nine degree uh, credit uh, for same concentration, so for example, if I got I have two concentrations. So for I me. have the two concentrations. Yes, yes. Okay. So it doesn't matter. It just help people to know that you have two more focuses. Right. Okay, since it's clear. I'm sorry, I just uh, need, yeah, need to share the recent experience in IMBA because in difference to NOS observation, recently we do have students uh, wanting to take the ETP core courses to enhance their uh, knowledge in a specific field. For instance, we do have students taking the R language in the MIS department because that is the basic for their business analytics and we do have students taking some artificial intelligence courses in the ETP uh, program, which is given in the daytime, most of the time, by all the departments in the uh, business school. So therefore, that's why I say it's, this school is very resourceful, and also is an optional uh, choice for you to take the ETP courses. Thank you. I think it's great. Like they said, you can bundle things together. If you have something specific you want to do, you want to be an IT marketing manager, you can bundle everything together. If you want management in Asia, um, a, a, man a marketing manager, you can bundle them together. There's a lot of different options. And with all these options, you can just choose what's best for you. And there's a lot of flexibility to really get you on the path that you really want to go. Are there any other questions? OK, we have one right here. Thank you. Uh, I have two questions. One is about, I'm wondering if IMBA is uh, suitable for the people that they don't have the business background when they're studying in the university. Like my case, uh, my bachelor's degree is in Chinese literature, but I already have the experience working in the retail industry for six years. So that's why I'm here today. And the second is, uh, I would like to know more about the, the detail, the procedure for the, the apply for the, the scholarship for the local student. Thanks. Um, do, do any of you guys have different bachelors than business? Uh, okay, yes. here we, we have one here, so we, we get first-hand experience with different. Um, I'm English major, <laughs> so all the way to business exec, uh, uh, then I went to business support for executive assistants. So I work with supporting team for sales team and I travel overseas for a trade show. Then I move on to HR for training. And I didn't say the career path, actually my career shook a lot. So uh, after IMBA, um, I attend IMBA program, then I move on to HR and training. Then after, after 15 years, I changed my company. I'm now working for an electronic company, listed company in Taiwan, and now it's my fifth year. So I actually changed a lot. Um, so it doesn't matter your background, your undergraduate, because you already have work experience. So it doesn't matter. Uh, it depends on your experience. Um, what was your second question? Uh, application process. Try to find Michi afterwards. <laughs> and and also one suggestion: if you want to make a good impression when you submit the application form, make sure you know these people. You know, interview <laughs> counts, right? So, one tiny suggestion. Thank you, Professor Vincent. Just want to add one thing. Uh, okay, so we welcome uh, anyone uh, from various background. Okay, so we are. Uh, well, we, I think we also have some students uh, who were uh, like. Uh, Writers, right? Yeah, we do. Uh, doctors. Artists. Yeah. My yeah. Artists. Artists. Yeah. 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 Doctor. So. We only have one third of students. They have a business education background, so no worries. Yeah, so even though you are not in business areas, it's still okay. Yeah, because we want to have a different perspective into our classroom discussion and want to bring you know, future business leaders 
Yeah, so any backgrounds, you know, all are welcome. And in terms of the application for scholarship, we don't need to put up a separate application form for scholarship. So when we receive your application, uh, we will screen your qualifications. But if you want to get uh, our scholarship, I would say you better have a GMAT score. And you need to have good GPA and have a you know, good work experience. Yeah. These are very important. Yeah. Because we we benchmark ourselves uh, to you know uh, top schools you know uh, worldwide, so our qualification you know if you want to receive uh, our scholarship, your you know admission criteria should also be you know match you know to these uh, students at uh, our peer schools. Yeah. So I hope I answer your question. Thank you. Um, we've run way over time. My fault. Um, actually, it was amazing to hear so many questions. Usually when you come to these events, one, maybe zero, answer, ask questions. It's great to see that you're all keen. Uh, remember, we are all going to be available at the refreshment, uh, refreshments and snacks for asking any questions. Of course, all of our hosts are going to be here. And there's a couple of uh, students here. Maybe, guys, you can give a quick wave. All are busy, I think. <laughs> So, so we do have some current students here. If you want to ask any questions, they're great people to ask about you know, the applications. We have international and local students here. Guys, it's great to see you here. And it's amazing that you've taken this first step. Fortune favors the bold. Be bold, be brave. There's an old Dutch proverb that says, the, first, the hardest part of the journey is the first step. You've already taken the first step. We hope to see you here next year or years later. Take care. Thank you all for coming. Thank you to, to all the presenters. We really appreciate everyone here. And uh, yeah, enjoy the refreshments and any questions will be welcome. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, they want to take a photo if they want to. Okay.